Hey guys, welcome back to another Eclipsis tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to skybase. Now, I'm in a practice mode right now with instant build turned on just for the sake of the video speed. But the concept is basically the same. So we're just starting out here from the spawn island. We've already made the arsenal and the tank and connected everything as you should be doing every single round, right? I, I have gone over this in other videos. Smart things to do, make sure you got guns with you at any time because you need to be ready for a rush if you're not rushing yourself and you should be rushing. Anyways, we are going to start off right here. And so it looks like we've got a really good spot right here to start off a sky base. So you want to start off with at least three pumps on the ground. And this is great because it has way more than that. Okay, so we've got five pumps over here. And we're just going to connect and fully upgrade these. Now instant build on Eclipsis is a really cool thing, but it does not uh, do anything for upgrades. And so I will need to go and be getting iridium for that. Yeah, like this right here, doesn't do anything. Okay, so just running back over here. And and when you're doing something like this, like if you're, if you're going back and forth making trips like this, it'd be smart to just keep on doing more things, right? So if I could, you know, I've got a gun over here. Okay, cool. Let's grab, let's grab a rocket launcher. Let's uh, keep on equipping ourselves, right? Anytime you're making a trip over there, just do something uh, to better yourself and put yourself in a better position for if you're attacked, when you want to attack, something happens. It's always good to be prepared in this game because literally anything can happen. Anyways, um, just getting this iridium, filling up our tank. Here we go. That should be enough there to finish that upgrade there. And once that's done, we can get all these going. And here we go. Now, this is not something you want to do. Um, sky basing, that is. This is not something you want to be doing by by yourself like this. Like, if you were just starting off a game, I wouldn't be going straight to sky basing like this. I would be going into a rush, uh, depending on who I was up against. Um, regardless of who I was up against, honestly, because your first thing does want is... Your first thing should be to try to take out your opponents as quickly as possible, right? Get as many of them out of the way as you can, because the longer you give all these people, the more trouble it's going to be for you to deal with them later, right? So just want to get rid of people as quickly as possible. Anyways, um, upgrading all these, getting them fully upgraded. So this is good right here. So three, I find, is enough, but more is definitely better. Um, so I'm going to put a shield down here. It's always good to have a shield. Make sure you have a turret. You know, you want you want defense of some kind and an arc turret here. Just just as kind of like a deterrent. Keep people away from there, right? Because somebody could just walk underneath if you put satchels in there. So we've got this. And then I'm going to set this down uh, probably to the lowest setting, honestly. Okay, yeah, turn that on. Because that encompasses everything in here and uses the least amount of power. If I was doing something like a three-pump base, you know, running a shield like that, that'd be... You'd definitely be wanting that in the lowest setting. Right here, probably could afford it to be bigger. Um, doesn't really matter, it's in practice. We don't have enemies anyways. Okay, so we are going to do keeps. And what we're doing with keeps is we build one keep here, and then we're gonna rotate this one 90 degrees, or no, sorry, 180 degrees in the opposite direction. Do another one here, and one more right here. Okay, and then right about here, Right, because you're building this with the fabricators that exist on your pumps, right? And so you're gonna do this directly over top of your pumps. And so you want to make a distributor and then you wanna make a fabricator or three. I like to make three, some people make two, but you you want at least two. And then we're gonna go right here. So so in a real game, without you know auto build turned on, these would still be banking, right? Like as soon as your um, distributor got built, you want to build the distributor first, attach a pipe, because then you can manually start filling these pipes, bring these pipes down to your base um, while those are being fabricated, right? You're using the iridium in your tank uh, to construct these pipes. You've got enough. Get these pipes going. Have that all done, and then get back up there. And now, by the time you get back up there, ideally, these are all finished constructing, and I'm going to fully upgrade these. You don't need to, and depending on how much of a rush you're in, there's an argument to be made for not upgrading them and just continuing on because time really is a big factor, especially with things like this. Like if you're against somebody else who's sky basing, it's really a competition of who can sky base first. Um, 
if you have teammates and they, you know, depending on who has more teammates, uh, that, that'll change things. If you are up against somebody else with a sky base, one thing to remember is to make sure you put that block there because that puts you up at the maximum height you could. Um, so if they have, you know, a block up there and you don't have a block up there, what, what's, what you're going to find is that if you get into an artillery face off, you know, they've got a little bit more height on you. They're at a significant advantage over you. So the one difficult thing with this is that I am using auto build and so I can't actually tell where the build limit is for these fabricators. But you want to basically go so I can I can have a look. I can see they weren't building there and so they wouldn't have constructed that were I in an actual game. And so this is the point where I would want to be making another distributor here. And I'm going to do this. And we're going to pipe it back. And actually, sorry, I, I forgot. While, while you're doing that, while you're piping that back again, you're going to be making these fabricators, right? And so these fabricators are going to be making themselves, and that's going to take time while you're doing this. But what that does for you is it um, just it just utilizes your time as efficiently as possible. Okay, so we've got all this going on. Um, double cap on your on your fabricators because each cap um, gives you 50 iridium per second, right? But a fully upgraded fabricator, by the way, you press B to upgrade fabricators. Um, that's that's a fact that a lot of people new to the game don't really realize. Um, so you fully upgrade your fabricators, right? And then they can do two things at once, and they can do things a lot more quickly, but they use more than 50 iridium per second. So you want to be doing uh, double caps on your fabricators. Okay, let's see, where is the limit? So it looks like we reached the limit again over here. And basically the way you're going to do this is you're just going to keep on doing this. You just keep on extending your sky bridge outwards um, with this in mind. So depending on who you're up against, right? Sky bridges are insanely effective, right? In any type of battle, you always want to get the high ground, right? That, that's a well-known fact. Um, I'm just going to put this over here just because it gives me more options. And um, you want to get the high ground and also artilleries, um, people don't really realize, but they are extremely effective. They are do, um, I think it's like 33% damage to shields. So even if somebody has fully charged shields, right? Even if they spam shields and they have fully charged shields, artilleries do splash damage on shields, right? So if they have a cluster of shields all grouped together, right? They spam shields, but they put them all beside each other. You're artillerying those, it's damaging all those shields at once, right? So you get an artillery set up over there, golden, golden, right? So you're just gonna keep on extending it to wherever your enemy base is, right? Let's say your enemy base is all the way over here. You're starting off from this point right here. You're trying to sky base. Um, if they were sky basing, you're both going to try to probably meet each other in the middle. Depending if you've got teammates, you're going to be cruising each other. If you guys are doing cruise missiles, best way to counter cruise missile spam, because cruise missile spam is what people are going to do. That's what, that's what any experienced player's initial response is probably going to be. At least if they've got the teammates, you know, there, there are other, com there are other counters to a sky base, but that's one of the most common ones and one of the easiest ones to do. Um, so you're going to want to wall spam. So you just spam the walls wherever they're cruising. Now doing this right basically you can see whatever their line of sight is to your base do the wall spam over here um, if you're by yourself and they're crew spamming um, that that's good for you because you're spamming walls make sure you know you're putting up uh, auto mechanics over here so that in between those breaks between crew spams that thing is gonna go fix you know all the damage that's going on and then you're just gonna keep on going now if um, if they're not crew spamming then then you're safe just keep on going right um, and really you just want to do this as quickly as possible and the faster you can get this out there like especially if it's at nighttime You can probably get a sky base up and you can get it out there before they even realize that a sky base is up there and going in the daytime Not so lucky, right? Like if you're if they've got even you know decent graphic settings on they're gonna see your sky base Sky base is kind of visible to everybody You're gonna get everybody's attention and you're gonna make yourself a target. So you need to be ready for that um, some things that I have found useful, right? So I'm, I'm going to address a couple of different situations, right? If you want to rush with the sky base, you're just going to keep on making, you know, those fabricators and keep on making these distributors and you just keep on extending it out, get those artilleries up as fast as you can. If you've got teammates, they're going to help you out with that and you're going to go out with that. Um, but if that's not the case, if you've got a long match going on, you know, your opponents are, you know, significantly, you know, they've got a base established, they're cruising you, all these things are going on, they're trying to take down your, your base. Um, you're going to make sure that you have defenses going on over here. So, you know, I will have been making sure that I had uh, fabricators over here, right? You want three again. You'll, you also want to be making sure you have independent uh, anchors. So, so different, different people of different experience levels have different approaches to sky basing and they have their own, their own theories, methodologies, all those things uh, regarding it. 
but but personally you know i do like to take a more conservative approach with my sky bases and i like to be a little bit more defensive so even even this sky base right here like i normally wouldn't be taking an aggressive approach with the sky base uh sky bases aren't personally my favorite thing to do they are something you know it's a it's in a it's a required skill time yourself do drills with sky bases see how fast you can make a sky base from a spawn pump typically for myself from a three pump i can make a sky base and have it up and going you know out to you know probably about the point back there in you know just under five minutes and and so just under five minutes eclipses nights take about um they they range so so you have two nights in eclipses right you have the six minute night and you have the 13 minute night and so either way you could have a sky base up and and getting going within that time before your enemy noticed so it's it's a really useful tool to have in your arsenal of skills um, anyways we've got this over here and i'm gonna go make some point defenses so i'm making the point defenses right underneath of the distributor just so that i know that it's going to be in range and i can put it all the way at the end of this bridge the reason i put it at the bridge there is it's going to go down lower to the ground and it's going to have more area on the ground that it's going to be able to focus on and it's going to be able to hit which is useful because if you have people trying to come up from underneath if you try to fire rockets at you or they're trying to laser strike you the point defense, you know, especially if they don't see it coming, is really going to catch them off guard, and it's going to be a good defense. Now, obviously, if they're doing concealment barges, you're kind of out of luck, and you're going to want to make sure you have shields up there. So, so the thing about this is, right, you have this trade-off that you need to make a decision about, right? Do you want to be fast, and do you want to take them out as quickly as possible? And are you going to bet that you can take out your opponents before they can take out you, right? Or take out, you know... This, this offensive maneuver that you're trying to execute. Um, in that case, don't focus so much on the defenses, focus on speed, focus on getting out there. But if they've got a large team, you're outnumbered, all these things, um, and, and you know they're gonna be making a move on you, you're probably gonna wanna go hard on the defense. You're gonna wanna be making sure you're doing stuff, right? So let's take this another way. So I've kind of given you a hypothetical situation where you're just rushing out there. You understand the basics of it. You know, you keep on doing this till you reach your opponent's base, and then you'd go with your artilleries, you do two artilleries, three artilleries, and and you just keep on spamming with the artilleries. Artilleries are great for taking out shields, great for taking out enemy bases, um, can do a lot of damage with it, and you can probably win the game with that, right? Um, however, sky bases are quite versatile, um, but they're also quite vulnerable. Like this right here, if my opponent had a laser strike anywhere he wants, he can laser strike me, and that sky base is done, okay? So... First off, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to choose a spot right here and I'm going to say I need an anchor on my sky base because if he's crew spamming, right? If he crew spams, so a smart crew spammer will take, you know, a couple cruises and send it over in one area of your sky base. And then, you know, you're going to rush over there and you're going to start spamming walls over there. But in the meantime, he's actually got, you know, probably like, you know, 10 or 15 cruises all lined up in a row. And so those three ones all went over there. And when they're heading towards you, you can't really tell, you know, are they heading up there, heading over there on your sky base? And so you're running over there to defend that. And then, you know, right behind you, 13 cruises just went past you and they are heading for another undefended area. And if you don't have teammates up there or if, you know, you can't get there in time, your sky base is done because they're all just concentrated in another area of your base. Um, even if it is defended, right, you know, it, it can take a, a couple of cruises, take out a wall, take out, you know, take out your bridge and, and it's gone in the water, you know, or on the ground, whatever, whatever it may be. But anyways, you don't want that to happen. So um, if you're playing defensively, you're not playing for speed make sure you have anchors, right? And so I'm including all these things, you know, depending on your experience level, these are probably things that you know, or that, that seem, you know, intuitive, but I'm just gonna make sure we check all the bases here. So you do wanna have anchors and you wanna make sure they're independently powered, right? So an anchor up in the sky takes five condensers to power. And so you're gonna do a little daisy chain like this, right? You're gonna use T junctions. And when you're at this height, you can only use T junctions. You can't use four ways. And I don't really know why that is, but it's just the way the, the game works at the moment anyways five is going to be the the golden golden number you need right there because this is using 25 iridium per second at this height so you need each one of these is producing 5.2 so 5 10 15 20 25 right so we got 25 and it's actually 5.2 so it's a little bit over there so it's gonna have a little bit of room for error if it lags or whatever and then when you've got this going on right so i like to make power production up here too and that's just because you know then your sky base is kind of independent from its ground, right? If you've got a big lineup of condensers going on over here and you've got, you know, shields protecting you, it's all kind of safe and secure, um, you don't really need your ground base, right? So they, they can go take out your ground base, they can do whatever they want with your ground base, but you're, you're up there in the air, you're, you're, sitting, you're sitting tight and comfortable, uh, things are looking good for you. So we're just going to do a daisy chain over here again with these condensers. 
and then we're going to go um, so that one actually should have been in the other direction that was my mistake there and and normally when you do pipes like this like if you know that this is going to be something you're going to be needing to do and you're not doing it for speed not doing it just get out there as quickly as possible you want to make four ways every now and then um, just because it you know allows you to not have to break up the pipe and interrupt the power supply somewhere else right just just instead you got to remove a cap instead anyways daisy chaining over here we got way more power over here right like think of each of these as being five iridium right and it's going to be a little bit more than that so after a couple of them it starts to give you a little bit of bonus here but you got 5 10 15 20 wait is that yeah it's 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 so it's 50 or so almost 50 iridium right there um put a couple more on there and you pass that right so that would be the same as getting what's that three uh pumps down there on the ground is giving you 45 iridium right because that's three fully upgraded uh, well pumps is giving you 45. This is 50 iridium right here, and this takes up this much amount of space. Now the problem with condensers, is condensers are very vulnerable, they're very weak. So you also wanna be making sure, you know, you've got your distributors over here, have shields. Now you've got your shields over here, power on your shields. And if you're playing defensively, put your shields on immediately. Even if you don't have that much power, put your shields on immediately and put them at the small shield diameter. Because when you do that, they're using less iridium, but they're still building up a charge and then once you have more power and you can sustain more things you're going to expand that it's going to take up five radium per second but it's going to keep that charge which you know that's kind of beneficial right there so you can you can charge them up while they're smaller and then expand them um it's also useful for things like laser striking or ssims you know because it needs that direct line of sight but you can close them bring them back down smaller so you can use that beam up to the sky and then expand it again Anyways, we've got the condensers over here, we've got power, all these things, you know, things are looking good. We've got shields, you're going to put reservoirs up here. Why reservoirs? Okay, first off, it is a really great way to store your power, okay? You got all this power supply up here, now you want to keep it somewhere. And you can hold, so if you're if you're producing power and you don't have the capacity to hold it, once once you fill your capacity, you know, it's kind of going to waste. It's not doing anything and it and it's useless. And so then when you get into a situation where you say you're being attacked or say, you know, things get disconnected or you're trying to use a lot of it all of a sudden, you, you want to be, you know, storing as much as you can, right? And so reservoirs have the highest health out of any single item, right? I think they, they, they have something something ridiculous. Let's, let's just hold alt over here and let's see, that's 2000 health over there, right? And so it takes more than a single laser strike to take out a reservoir which means that if they're trying to go over here and laser strike your base you're going to need a couple more laser strikes if you want to get rid of this now right um they can still crew spam and you do have your exposed um condensers over there but that's you know not a whole lot you can do about that if, if you're really you know whatever you can you can put reservoirs down there but that's going to take a lot of fabricators it's probably not worth the time you're better off playing more aggressively like that if you're playing defensively like that and really focusing on defense so much unless you have other teammates who are doing aggressive moves um you know no you the best the best defense is a good offense um anyways so so we're in this situation now we've got these reservoirs over here and make sure you're putting them over top of your anchor too and make sure you're having multiple anchors so protecting the anchors doing the reservoirs more defensive things okay so we've got a shield here now some people's first thought when defending a sky base like this when defending anything might be you know let's stack the shields all really really close to each other oh, a shield there put another shield put another shield put another shield don't do that and especially in the sky base and the big reason for that is cruise spams uh, you know cruise cruise missiles in general do splash damage to shields right so if you have a bunch of shields all clustered together and a cruise spam goes and hits it it's going to do damage to every single one of those shields right and so instead take your shields space them out a little bit here and they're all going to charge up right it's going to give you more more protection um but then you know, it's still gonna, it's going to take more cruises to actually do, you know, reach you here, right? So if they want to do splash damage, they have to hit right in the middle here if they're going to do splash damage all, right? If they're, you know, facing you over there and they want to cruise spam you, they, they're going to have to pick one and they're going to have to go individually, right? And so if you've got time to let these charge up, um, anyway, stagger your shields gives you, um, puts you in a better position. It's, it's a better defensive tactic. Okay, so you've got staggered shields over here. Um, what else? What else is good for defense here? So we've got staggered shields. We've got reservoirs. Depending on how aggressive they're being, depending on the situation, you could do reservoirs walking all the way out there and just slowly advance with fours. You know, um, it's kind of slow. There's, there's, you know, if you're if you're in a situation like that, the game's probably no longer worth your time. Depending if how you're playing, right? If you're playing for spite, you know, sure, go for it. If you're playing for raiding, um, I would leave. I would just go play another match. 
take the loss and you can probably regain it. It that just that's that's a personal decision right there. Anyways, we've got staggered shields over here, we've got auto mechanics, um, put spawns up here too. That's another thing. Um, and with a with a sky base that's really long like this, you want multiple spawns along here just because it lets you get from point to point really, really quickly. Um, you don't always need to expand your um, sky base. You don't need to extend it all the way, right? A, a really good technique with a sky base, um, even for even for being offensive, right, is just to crew spam. So, you know, build build out a thing of cruises right here, and just um, because because you're up in the air, right? You pretty much have a line of sight of most of the stuff, right? The only thing blocking you is the spires, but but a lot of people's bases and things are going to be visible to you and, and accessible to you, right? So you just do the cruises, spam that daisy chain those again and this is where it's good to have that capacity right you, you know we have a full reservoir over there we can easily do a cruise spam whereas if you only have like a tank down at the bottom that's vulnerable to being destroyed um not as not as good of a position to be in so we've got cruise spams so cruise spams are one thing like if they're coming over they're probably going to want to laser strike this laser strikes are pretty good against sky bases cruise spams not one of those things you can put a reservoir over top of you're going to want to make sure you have a shield over top of this, but also make make multiple cruise spams. You know, as as you extend the base, you want to keep on building them out. Again, these these are all things that depend on the situation you're in. You need to be, you know, playing it as you go. Who you're up against, what what are they doing? Um, just make your own risk assessment there. But but anyways, um, I think I think we've covered most of our bases here with the sky base, right? Um, basic setup, how to go over things. A lot of it comes down to your own creativity. Um, but it but it does give you an idea of of how to get up in the air there. So oh, one thing I would say uh, put put defenses up in the sky base. Put you know turrets up here because if you don't have any turrets, you don't have any defenses up here. A really great move you know if you want to take down a sky base right because you've got this turret over here right, but you've got this section of undefended stuff. Um, come up behind a wall if you've got you know fully upgraded health, you could probably do it. Put a boost pad on a barge. Um, conceal the barge drive it underneath here, so let's say it's dark, they won't see it coming, and then just come up here with the drill, and they just drill it. And if you didn't have an anchor over here, they've just sunk you know, half your sky base. All that work, all that time, just gone, um, really sets you back, um, potentially changes the outcome of the game. So just, it, it's not that hard just to put up, you know, a single turret, you know, make sure it has a line of sight to everywhere, you know, for the next stretch of the sky base, and just have it sitting there, right? So if somebody comes up here, you know, they're, they're not going to be able to sit there and drill something, right? They're, they're going to have to keep moving. Anyways, um, I think I think this is good enough. I think we've covered all our bases. If you guys have any videos, any concepts, any ideas that you would like me to go over and just give an overview of, let me know in the comments. If you have, you know, different ways that you sky base, if, if you think, you know, there's something that could be improved about this, you have suggestions for other people, absolutely share them in the comments, right? Um, the whole point of these videos is to really inform and educate people and, and, and help make better Eclipse as players, because this is a really fun game, I enjoy it, and you know, I, I'd like to see other people succeed at it as well. Anyways, thank you for watching, uh, please like, comment, subscribe, all of the above, and have a good day.